sometimes think your decisions are unpopular. Jonah wanted nothing to do with that. He got up and fled in the opposite direction of Nineveh. Let's unpack that for just a second, if you will. Jonah is a son of Israel, the uniquely chosen people of God. He has been taught as a small child that God has a special relationship with his people and that God is creator of all and sovereign over all. Yet Jonah refuses to listen to God's call. This causes me to ask why. Why, Jonah? Why did you not want to go to Nineveh? We do not need to speculate on the answer because we're told the answer at the end of the story. Jonah, following a brief, close encounter of the fish kind, reluctantly goes to Nineveh to preach God's warning. As he is going throughout the town and preaching, people are listening and people are telling each other about what they are hearing. The news reaches the king of the city who orders everyone to repent and to show signs of warning in order to let God know that they are sorry and hoping that he will change his mind. Jonah, meanwhile, goes out of the city up to a hillside overlooking the town and watches to see what will happen. When nothing does happen, no fire, no brimstone to destroy the city, he is royally ticked off. He begins to yell at God, See, I knew this would happen. I knew the people would listen and repent. I knew you would forgive them. Now I look like a fool. I wish I had never heard your voice. I wish I could just die. I'm so mad. God asked him, Are you angry because I'm in mercy? Let's look at this. Why would it upset John? I believe the answer is obvious and truthful. At first, he feels that he looks like a fool in the eyes of the people of Nineveh because his predictions have not come to pass. But more importantly, he wanted to see those people destroyed. The they deserved it. They were evil. They were not God's chosen people. God should have just wiped them off the face of the earth in his opinion. But you see, Jonah had forgotten something. I believe I believe that God wants us to hear this message today. The message that God gave to Jonah was that the people of Nineveh are God's people too. He, reminded, he created them just like he created the people of Israel. And by the way, the people of Israel had their own issues with evil behavior too. What does this have to say for us today here in this world? Here's what I hope you take away from the story. The fact is, we are a divided people. A divided state, a divided nation. It's us against them. Black against white. Red against blue. Liberal against conservative. My kind, your kind. This is especially true in an election year. There seems to be no common ground, but there is. We are all Georgians in this room. We love this state and what it has to offer. I lived in another state for four years a while back. It was a nice place, beautiful landscape, nice friendly people. They even had four full and discreet, distinct seasons every year. Nevertheless, I did not wait to get back home to Georgia. I was born here. God willing, I will die here in Georgia. I hope you feel the same pride in this state. Let us not make the same mistake Jonah made. Let us not forget that we are brothers and sisters. We may have different views, but we are one people. We may believe in different solutions for the same problem, but we are one people. We may share different groups, philosophies, creeds, races, and genders, but we are one people. 
We are George's people. We are God's people. Don't ever forget that. And when you're debating issues on this floor, remember that your opponent is your fellow Georgian. Try to see the other's point of view and seek compromise where possible. It is the diversity that makes Georgia great, and it is working together to find solutions that work that make Georgia strong. So reach across the aisle. Step over the lines. Put the argument down and celebrate on the common ground. If you will, please take the break. Lord God, our Father, I come before you today and lift up to you, my brothers and sisters, and the representatives. I pray that you will be first and foremost on their minds and hearts as they deliberate issues that affect our state. Lord, allow your peace and grace to abound in this chamber, surrounding all here with your love. May your spirit be among us and make us one. In all things, may we be pleasing in your sight to you, O Lord, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. If you will join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.